together.
to just stand up and put your hands together.
Christmas. Worship with one more song. for our leaders, Pastor Mitchell, Pastor Greg, Pastor uh, Jesse uh, Morales, and uh, let's pray for the Casios, Stephen and Emily, and uh, Diego Kelly Galvan in Prescott, Arizona. That's our grandmother church. Let's lift them up. Health to them, prosperity, blessing to flow, jobs for all the congregation uh, to meet all their needs. Let's also pray for the Campos and the Ganeers and Cape Cod, Massachusetts, the Northeast leadership here for us in Greece, New York. Let's also pray for Jacksonville, the Suspanskis, and the Kings. Amen. Let's believe God for their ministry to flourish. Amen. Let them find favor with uh, government officials. Let them find favor with uh, buildings and codes and all that God is doing there. Let them find favor as they outreach in that city for multitudes of conversions. Let's pray for our pastor, Keith and Carrie Sullivan. Let's believe God for miracles in the uh, East Rochester Church. All our new converts making quality choices, making uh, godly decisions. Amen. Let's pray for uh, some special prayer requests here in the Greece Church. Uh, let's pray for uh, Gina's daughter whose cancer has returned. Let's pray for God to give them a miracle in that situation. Angelo and Joe recovering from cancer surgery. Uh, let's pray for a, a girl, a young lady by the name of Flora and her baby twins. She's facing some 
serious issues and giants in her life. She needs a miracle. She needs God to help her. Let's pray for Elaine and her husband. Amen. Family needs in that situation. Perhaps there's a need in your life that I did not mention. Amen. You didn't put it up as a prayer request. But God is quickening to you right now something that you need in your life. Something of a desperate nature. Maybe it's uh, something that you cannot do. Something that's beyond you. Amen. We spoke this morning about finding favor. Amen. And we spoke about a gentleman by the name of uh, Jeff Beswick who found favor. He got jobs he wasn't even qualified for. And God wants to usher you into your future and into a destiny uh, where you can be fruitful in your life. Amen. You can have those things added to your life. Amen. Let's pray for uh, conversion. See, let's pray for our new converts, all those that are praying here in Greece and Gates, uh, and what, all, what God is doing here. Let's believe God this year for Greece Church to become self-supporting and all the needs here to be met financially. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Brother David, can you open us up when we're done praying? Let's pray, church. God, you're awesome. God, we Jesus, thank you, God, that you yeah. delivered us from uh -huh. darkness. God, show your light to shine Lord, revelation God, tonight through the word. God, we pray for miracles. We uh, loose the supernatural, God. That you can do whatever you want to do, God. You can fill this place to overflowing, God. Give us converts. Uh, give us disciples to make quality decisions, God. We pray for our altars to be filled. We pray for a great response. Uh, in Greece, New York, as we hand out flyers, as we witness, God, as we testify. God, bring down the Holy Ghost, God, to our labors, God, anointing them with power. And uh, our ministry with unction, Lord God, that many would be coming to Christ, God. Many would be serving you. Many would become forgiven of their sins. Oh, we thank you, Jesus, that you control the soul thing. I ask that you touch Patrick and get him on fire. For you. Introduce yourself to him. We, know, we need some converts, Lord, that have given their lives to you, not making a religious decision, but needing you personally, Lord. We ask that you do whatever you can, Lord, to bring that back so that we have some men and women that love you and are willing to serve you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God, for bearing fruit, God, and we pray that this fruit would remain. Amen. Let's take a minute to greet one another. And uh, we want to welcome you if you're online. Amen. Welcome to Greece Potter's House. Uh, let's take a minute in the uh, congregation here to say hello to everyone. Welcome to the Greece Potter's House. It is a joy to be here in God's presence, amen, worshiping together with the congregation and watching what God is doing here, amen. We want to encourage you to come to church, amen. We're located in the uh, uh, Toys R Us Plaza behind Buffalo Wild Wings, amen, and uh, our church has been open 
Uh, we have, uh, you know, we practice COVID-19 uh, suggestions and guidelines and uh, come and see what God is doing. There's something different when you show up to the church building, amen, and you knit your heart with other believers. We'll be here again on Wednesday at 7.30, 6.30 is our prayer midweek service. Come and find out what God has for your life, amen. Get involved in the work, amen. Come out of your home and come out of yourself and knit your uh, life with other people. Watch what God will do. We also want to remind you about the John Robinson Revival. Here's the miniature version of the flyers. Maybe you're more comfortable handing those out. We also have a larger version of the flyer uh, that's a little bit more uh, able to see. I don't have one up here right now and I'll show you. Uh, but take a couple with you. Hand them out throughout the week. Uh, let people know that there's a church that preaches the Holy Ghost. We preach about miracles. We preach about conversions, amen, and a living God that wants to help you. Uh, we're going to believe God for miracles, salvation, the greatest of all miracles. But if you know somebody who's sick, you can bring them, and we will lay hands on them, and they will recover, amen. That's what Jesus has promised you and I. That is uh, Valentine's Day is the first service. We'll be here at 1030 in the morning and, uh, and at night, 630. And then Monday night through Thursday night, we'll be back here every night, amen, at 7.30, amen, and find out what God has for your life. It's critical that you, amen, make a move towards God if you want God to help you in your life and save you and equip you for, amen, your journey in this world as a pilgrim, amen. Let's go ahead and change the order of our service. We're going to take up our offering and uh, let's be liberal tonight and give to the work. This scripture is about Judas who agrees to betray Jesus in Mark 14, verses 10 and 11. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. So he saw it how he might conveniently betray him. You know, money does strange things to people. Amen. It causes them to get excited about things that are not God's will. Amen. Perhaps uh, things that are, you know, of a material nature. You want things. Uh, amen. And you, uh, you think about money a different way than... What God wants you to think about money as money is not evil, amen. But we see it in this situation as being used for evil. That uh, the uh, Pharisees agreed to give Judas money. He said, "Okay, let's do that." He agreed to that. You know, <coughs> Judas was the treasurer of the disciples. He held the money back. He carried the money so that they could purchase things that they needed. And it says that once in a while he would take from it as he wanted to. He was uh, covetous in a way. He had a problem with money. But here we find him selling out his savior, selling out his master, his teacher, one of his best friends. Money does strange things to people if we're not careful. Amen. Let's think about the importance of keeping a, a good you know, good mindset about what money is for you. And money, God has given you money, amen, so that you can bl be blessed, of course, but also bless the church, amen, and bless other people in your life, amen. God has given you more than enough, amen. He wants you to open up your clenched fists so that he can put more money into it. Amen. If he can get money to you, then he, if he can get money through you, excuse me, he can get money to you. Amen. You can write that down. Amen. God is faithful. He's going to bless you. Now let me ask the usher to come forward to take up our offering. Amen. Be a liberal giver. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. This is a sign of getting saved, of uh, be beginning to tithe and uh, you know give money to the church. Amen. Brother, can you pray over the offering? Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for all you do. God bless you. Lord, 
bless you. You can click the link if you're listening online and you want to make a donation. Amen. Let's sing that song. you'd like to read in your Bibles along with us, we're going to be in 1 Timothy 4, 15 in a minute. This is called the discipline in what I eat. And there are many who will hear about this devotional commentary and know that uh, this writer has uh, type 2 diabetes. When he was diagnosed several years ago, the doctor told him he had a choice. He says, I can go ahead and eat everything just like I had been doing, or I could stop eating anything with sugar added. He went on to tell me that many who continue to eat things with sugar and uh, added up, excuse me, added, end up, bef have their feet and their legs amputated, and some of them go blind. He knew that I ministered to young people, the writer is sharing and asking if I would tell an alcoholic or a drug addict wanting to quit that it would be okay to continue drinking or taking drugs, but just try to taper off a little bit. Of course, he made his point that I needed to do something radical. What did Jesus say? He said, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. That's pretty radical. He said, if you're a thief and you're stealing things, cut your hand off. Because it would be better to enter into life a maimed or without a body part and, and find yourself in heaven eventually doing uh, a radical decision like that. Cutting things off is what we're going to look at, amen, through discipline. Of course, he had made his point, uh, and this doctor wanted him to stop eating sugar items. Yes, it has taken discipline, but this writer says, I have followed his advice and stopped eating sugar items. So that was painful to him. It's such a painful life to do without. Amen. But we're going to study the effects of making quality choices and disciplining our decisions. Look at some of the great health benefits. Let's also look tonight at the spiritual benefits of a disciplined life from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. Paul's writing to the young pastor. He's trying to stir up things inside him to bring to remembrance and to direct him so that he can be the most successful pastor possible. He writes to uh, Timothy, meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Verse 16 Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing so, you will both save yourself and those who hear you. Amen. So most of us in here are not pastors. Most of us will never preach or teach or do anything like this, but we're going to glean from the scriptures here and to see what is important for our growth. 
as Christians. We're not talking about just uh, shadow boxing, as they say, beating at the air, amen. But we're talking about real discipline, amen, and getting a hold of God, training, leading people as an example through your faithfulness, through your life. And I've entitled this sermon, Push Yourself and Pull Others. I got to thinking about that, that you, can, you can't just tell people what to do. You need to uh, A, A, B, and C. You need to watch this. You can't just tell people what to do. But when you yourself have become disciplined, you can become an example to them on how to become disciplined, on how to train yourself, and how to uh, uh, become the most useful Christian vessel possible. Yes, the letters of Timothy were written by Paul to encourage the young pastor to do everything in his power to become the best pastor possible. Some of these letters are a reminder to stir up the gift that God has uh, given him. And I'm going to encourage you to remember, amen, the gifts that God has given your life. Maybe they're going dormant. Maybe they're turning into an ember turning into a smoking flax like a candle that once was burning and crackling and now it's just smoldering. And uh, tonight, by way of this sermon, I want you to stir up the gift that God has put inside of you. Amen. To enable yourself to rise to your potential, your fullest usefulness, and to apprehend all that God's greatest destiny has offered to you. I'm going to utilize these letters to emphasize uh, them, and we're going to address them to ourselves tonight. Amen. As men and women of God, striving to become all that we can be through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. To develop a personal responsibility to set and prioritize things in our life that we may be lacking, and other things. Thank God. God has given us our strength, but we need to pay attention to our weaknesses. And we're going to look tonight at uh, the greatest need for you and I is that to start thinking spiritually. Amen. Think about spiritual issues. Think about God. Amen. Uh, it's good uh, evidence. It's good proof that someone's gotten saved if they bring up Jesus in the conversation, isn't it? It's just a, a way of revealing their heart. And when you and I think about God on a continual basis, amen, he will help us, amen, meditating on the things of God. That word meditate, Paul uses meditate on these things. Give yourselves entirely to them, excuse me, that your progress may be evident to all. So our need is to meditate or to think long and hard about what's happening. What's going on in your life? Amen. Are you progressing in the Christian experience? Meditate means to think hard about something, not just casually, but to study it. Amen. It's easy to, to think about anything except for spiritual realities. Everybody was really bummed out because the Buffalo Bills are not going to the Super Bowl, I guess. That's not really a spiritual reality. You know, what's on sale at Walmart or, you know, what's the newest app on? Those things are, are very easy to talk about and think about. Uh, but spiritual issues are so much more complicated and so much more essential, but we just put them off. We don't even think about them. It's easy to think about recreation, about the new movie at Tinseltown, what's being released, recreation, things that are entertaining to us. We love to think about those things that are fun. Spending money it is uh, therapeutic sometimes. Can you say amen? Yeah. It's fun. It's, it's nice. To, you know, uh, you have, you're, you're depressed. People like to spend money. But thinking about it, thinking about spending money, going on vacation, some people already have their paycheck spent before they get it on Friday. People spend a lot of time thinking about money. 
or maybe about jo jobs or um, you know how can I get uh, rich quick or how can I do uh, more or get more money or uh, you know get a second job maybe how can I do this and think about these things income there's a get rich quick schemes some people think about winning the lottery hey man you know you got to have a dream right and they think about that getting uh, rich through the lottery. Many people spend many hours thinking about this throughout the week. Or relationships. They think about falling in love. Oh, I'm going to have a boy show up and he's going to sweep me off my feet. He's going to help me with all my problems. He's going to be the solution to all my issues. They spend a lot of time thinking about relationships. Here's the negative side of thinking about things that are not spiritual. You might be thinking negative thoughts about the, the times that you have failed or the things that you screwed up on. You may spend time uh, thinking about how people have ripped you off, how people uh, have failed you. Amen. You might have past regrets. A lot of people spend time thinking about those things which are not spiritual. Actually, they're demonic and they're uh, coming from hell so that you can uh, be deflated, derailed, or turned out of God's will and becoming overly concerned with yourself. These are thoughts that we meditate on that are no good for our progress. They actually hinder us. Amen. Secondly, amen, we need to think about our example. That is our lifestyle that has been laid down. That is the habitual way of doing things. The way that you are thinking about life will turn into actions. And those actions that are continually working, amen, will become a habit in your life. We'll stop right there in the process. It needs to be understood that Paul is describing the things that are needed to uh, always be in the forefront of our thinking. He goes through a list here, and I'm going to briefly touch on them. If you want to be a successful Christian, you're going to have to address these things. If you want to be a nominal Christian, if you want to just, you know, sign your name on the paper, yeah, I believe all that stuff. But if you really want to press in for God's will, you're going to have to be aware of these issues. You're going to have to be in touch with them. You're going to have to think about them. And you're going to have to begin to behave in these manners. Amen. If this life is worth living, amen, it's worth living right. It's worth pulling out all the stops and doing everything that's in your power to be successful as a Christian. Can anybody say amen? Amen. 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 Let's just go full bore. Let's not just play at it like it's a joke or it's a toy. Amen. But this is what life is about, and that is, amen, getting a hold of God. What did Os Oswald Chamberlain, he wrote a book, My Utmost for His Highest. If this life is worth living, then we should do it right and do it to the best of our ability to give us uh, the furthest effort that's possible in the highest regard for God's plan to be realized personally in our lives. Amen. Additionally, that word utmost is a noun that's referred to the highest attainable point or degree. So before we talked about our, our, our scripture, Paul was writing to Timothy to pay attention to these things. The word, the word that you speak is critical, amen. It's very difficult to tame the tongue, James writes about, to get, getting a control over the things that you say. Not that you would never say anything aggressive or challenging to certain individuals, but more like you would not have to be able to regret and taking those words back that you spoke that are like blowing on that dandelion. <sighs> and all those seeds are out. There's no way you can gather them back. They're gone. And so it's critical to think about the words that you speak. Amen. The unchristian words. Amen. They, Sometimes you might say something and other people will take it the wrong way. You have to be careful. 
And then Paul says, Timothy, watch what you say. Secondly, the conduct. Here's where the rubber meets the road. With every thought comes an action. And the action reveals, amen, uh, what we're into, what we're thinking about, what we really want to do. There's an accompanied behavior when you start to think and it becomes your lifestyle, becomes a pattern of thought, becomes an action and a habit. Think about love, Paul said. 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter. Amen. Not just in word, not just like a crashing symbol, as they say in 1 Corinthians. <laughs> It's there, and now it's gone. It's worthless. But Paul is trying to make the point that your love should be in a reality. The heart should direct the thrust of your life. Your relationships with other people really do matter. The way that you talk to people, the way that you treat them, you make a promise, you should fulfill it. Amen. You should do it out of a deep concern for their relationship with God. Paul's telling Timothy, do not forget to love people as being a pastor. And spirit, pay attention to the spirit that you have, the way that you approach everything, every opportunity in your life. Amen. Your personal attacks, people that are coming against you. And how do you respond to that? What does your spirit do? Does your spirit want to get a pound of flesh, want to get paybacks and treat them the way that, that you're being treated? Paul says, no, Timothy, you need to watch your spirit. Amen. Timothy, pay attention to the faith. I mean, the way that you're thinking, the formation of your thinking. Are you putting God first? in the forefront of every situation when, when God calls for it, when you need to be thinking spiritually, what do you believe is, is happening in here? I'm not talking about picking peas or carrots in the freezer section at the store. I'm talking about serious decisions that you have to make in relationships, in finances, in the direction of your life. And then addressing spiritual things with spiritual disciplines. Amen. Calling on God in purity. Our morals will always determine the success, the quality of our conscience. Amen. Paul saying, Timothy, you need to watch your moral. Watch the way that you're thinking, the purity of your heart. You don't want to be stained or uh, getting off track because you will not be fruitful. You will not be useful. You're your preaching will not be anointed. Paul's encouraging the young pastor to give himself entirely to it. Don't just be half cocked. Don't be uh, just, you know, you're just playing it. It's like, uh, it's like a hobby. I mean, if this is going to be a hobby, let's just go home. We're serious about living for God. Give yourself entirely to your relationship with God. That means in everything, everything that's inside of you, fight the good fight. And then give your best effort. Go all in. Amen. Don't be merely religious. Amen. Uh, just sitting there in the worship service. Amen. But sing and sing with all your heart and worship God. You're not just there to be watching, not just there to be listening. Amen. But participate. Give it your all. Amen. Not just being religious to impress some people and uh, to you know show off as you know that you're religious, but really become determined to conquer your enemies and all those things that are against you. Give yourself entirely to reading. You may think that the Bible is outdated, amen, but it's still relevant for today. It's an ancient book. I've realized this year. But we have ancient problems that can be addressed through the scriptures. They speak about anger and rage and racism. It, the Bible gives us the antidote, the uh, healing for all these things of lust uh, and greed and covetousness and self-centeredness. Amen. The Bible has the answers. And so we need to give ourselves entirely to reading scriptures. When the last time 
that you read your Bible by yourself? Did you wait and read it in church with the pastor when it came up on the screen? Or did you spend time reading it in the morning or after hours? Reading the Bible, amen. Some of these things are not going to go away unless you address these issues and destroy some of these things. You can find the answers in reading the Bible. Give yourself uh, entirely to exhortation. Timothy was a pastor and a preacher. And it was critical for him to not be afraid of older people. Amen. But uh, to stir up the gift that was inside of him. Amen. The boldness that Paul gave to him through the laying on of hands. And they all prayed when Timothy was uh, sent to be a preacher, to be a pastor there. To preach in season. When he felt like it and when he didn't feel like it. And to bring to the congregation a sermon that was anointed. So it wouldn't just be blah, blah, blah. Or maybe, you know, maybe you're a comedian, you're trying to make everybody laugh. But instead of those things, to actually uh, do some surgery through the Holy Spirit in people's hearts as he preaches. Amen. Give yourself entirely to doctrine. Amen. You can't just make up your own interpretation of the scriptures, of the Bible, but you need to understand it through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Understand scriptures through scriptures. And in context, understand what the author is trying to convey. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And is profitable for doctrine, for teaching, and for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That the woman of God would be useful. Amen. Studying the Bible and adjusting the way that you think amen, will make you into a Christian. Will make you into a better Christian. Somebody asked me last night, they said, what does repent mean? It was awesome. Repent is changing your mind. It's the mind after. Metanoia. How you think after the scripture, after the Bible has been taught to you, after you've read a portion, a sentence, and how you respond, how is your mind going to think differently? Amen. Lastly, the evident progress that God is changing your life. He's inside of you. If he's inside of you, we should probably see him uh, coming out of you a little bit, wouldn't you think? There's three opinions that I want you to consider tonight. The first opinion is uh, yours. The second is God's. And lastly, we'll talk about other people's opinion of you. Your opinion, after a very short time, as you get, devote yourself, you give yourself entirely to the Word of God and to uh, serving God with all your heart, amen, it will become evident, amen, to yourself. In the book, uh, Make Your Bed, I just started reading, this is called The Circus. And this is about uh, seal, Navy SEAL training that uh, the uh, new uh, prospects were always trying to be discouraged by uh, the officers that are above them, training them. You're never gonna make it. You gotta go swim that uh, two miles in the ocean. You're never gonna make it. And so these guys would always be challenged, amen, and they had these horrible things that they had to do, obstacle uh, courses and races and all kinds of physical calisthenics. And so the guys that came in last had to perform in the circus. The circus was at the end of the day, before dinner, and uh, all the guys had to perform for their commanding officers and all the people who came in first. So they were always the last people. They had to do a hundred push-ups. They had to do a uh, hundred sets. They had to uh, do extra activity. It was like a circus. But 
But what's interesting that happened here after several sessions of embarrassment for having to perform in the circus, they started getting stronger. They started developing muscles that they never had before. And pretty soon, it says here that they uh, began to come in first place. No longer did they have to perform in the circus and be uh, an embarrassment. But they began to get stronger and more confident, and pretty soon they came in first. Amen. That is your opinion of yourself. Amen. Now you will realize that all that you've been fighting for is worth it. All the discipline that you've been going through, faithfulness to church, reading the scriptures, praying for other people, all those things, amen, will become apparent to yourself. And then secondly, let's look at God's opinion, what he thinks of us, the almighty one, the all-conscious one, uh, the omniscient one. That means he thinks, he sees everything that you're going through. He knows what you're doing. He can see your changed life. He even knows your intentions and your motives. He sees your progress. And the scripture says that he is pleased. Amen. He gives more to those who have more. Amen. It's insane to think about what God's opinion of us is like, yes, you are improving. You are growing. I can see that you are becoming disciplined. And my opinion of you is uh, very good. And I'm going to give you more. Lastly, our uh, progress should become evident to other people. Amen. As we uh, are serving Jesus, amen. You, uh, people in your family, they're going to see it. People in your church, your, uh, on your job, your spouse, they're going to notice something is going on in your life. Because, why? Because you've decided to give everything to Jesus. You've decided to, to go full in and uh, full bore and pull out all the stops. And people can see that your progress will be evident. It will be shown to them. You will begin to speak differently. You will treat other people more fairly. And you will have more mercy for other people. You'll have compassion for other people. Amen. You'll be able to sympathize with them. You'll be more like Jesus. Your progress will become evident to yourself, God, and other people especially. The promise that God makes is that if you take hold of this, amen, you will become successful. Amen. Take heed, Paul says. Take heed to yourself. Uh, Timothy, pay attention to what you're doing here. Listen. And uh, uh, some of us are too cheap to pay attention. But paying attention will yield great results, amen. As you look at what's going on in your life, you're studying things, you're studying people, you're praying, God, help me to grow, amen. And you're looking at your life. The personal cost that's incurred from applying all your learning initially and most important to your own development. It's okay to focus on you. It's okay to look at your own life and uh, uh, what do they call that? You're, you're taking, a, um, uh, you're inspecting your own life. Amen. You're thinking about what you're thinking about. You're not pointing your bony finger at other people. It was my family that uh, caused me to become who I am. It was my uh, parents or it was th those people on the east side. They're to blame for all my mistakes. But instead, you point that pointy, pointy finger back at yourself and you think about yourself. Amen. Don't try to blame it on other people. Take heed to yourself. Amen. He says, do not neglect the gift. Remember how the elders put their confidence in you. Amen. When you were anointed, when you were sent out, he's talking to him about being a pastor. Don't neglect that gift. Don't forget about the laying on of hands. When a pastor, when my wife and I were 
uh, were sent out in 2017 in the July conference. They brought us up on stage. They laid hands on us. They prayed. They gave us words. Amen. And scripture is reminding us to think about that. Never forget that. There's been prophecies over the Greek, the Greece church. Amen. We should never forget those things. Amen. Praying for healing. Amen. Praying for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Or praying for an anointing or an impartation that comes from your pastor. I coveted a uh, my pastor to have a, a something of value that came from his life into me that I could be more fruitful. Do not neglect the gift. There's a transfer of life and spirit and of the Holy Spirit, amen, into our lives from our pastors and our elders and those who pray over us. Take heed to the doctrine if you want to understand God and his plan for your life, you're not only going to have to read the Bible, but start asking questions. If you're going to be in relationship with somebody, you're going to have to get to know them. And getting to know them means you can ask them questions. Studying. Here's a disciplined approach to learning about God through studying and uh, a subsequent revelation that God will give to you. As you're reading your Bible, do you just flip through the pages? Hmm, I wonder what I'm going to read next. Drop the Bible on the ground, see what page to. No, I'm talking about studying and looking through the scriptures, trying to understand what God is uh, revealing to us through the scripture. And then words mean something. And in the culture of Jesus' day, those different situations meant different things. And uh, studying the scripture, amen. Taking heed to doctrine. Doctrine is teaching, amen. If you want to be successful in life, you're going to have to become a student of life. And that means ready and willing to learn. And taking heed, amen. Knowing the Bible is equivalent to knowing Jesus. Can anybody say amen here? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Knowing what the Bible is revealing, God is showing up on every page of the Bible, Jesus is at creation. Jesus is in the garden. Jesus is the blood sacrifice in the Garden of Eden. I mean, Jesus is throughout the entire Bible. And when you get to know the Bible and the Word of God, you will learn who Jesus is. John 1.14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Knowing Jesus, he is revealed throughout Scripture. Secondly, amen, taking heed of, to teaching. Not everybody is called to be a pastor, I understand that. But you are called to teach. Amen. You can teach other people. You may, as a parent, teach your children. Maybe you're in your school or on your job in relationship with other people and they say something about God. You can teach them what you know, what the Bible reveals who Jesus is. You can teach them about life. You can teach sinners, secondly, and unbelievers about God. Amen. Taking heed to the doctrine, to teaching so you can teach other people. Amen. The pastor needs to be gifted in the ability to teach, to break down scriptures, to give understanding of the text, and to make it exciting, to make it applicable. Amen. Who hates listening to a preacher ramble on and on about something that is irrelevant? Or a pastor or a preacher who's giving a speech, and he's preaching over the heads of the people in the congregation with fancy words. Yeah. This is not important. This is, this is not a show. This has got to connect with you. Amen. Let's close this evening and talk about continuing. Amen. Paul's writing to Timothy, there's got to be a continuity here. Amen. A lifestyle of studying and uh, uh, seeking God's will and uh, coming into that understanding of, as a lifestyle. Continue in these things. Paul is writing here. Continue in them, for in doing this you will both save yourself. 
You can't just do it uh, at like a one-time shot, but these things that Paul is uh, reminding Timothy about are like oxygen or like food for a plant. Amen. They're like food for life. Amen. Let's think about seed planting for a minute here because this is so relevant and so powerful that sometimes the seed is planted uh, by the wayside. It's just been scattered. It's like it's wasted. And the birds of the air snatch it up and it's gone. So it's really useless. The word of God can be planted uh, on stony ground also. But because it's got a shallow amount of earth there, there's no way that the roots can go down deep and get the nutrients that they need. It's just short-lived. The word is, it dies quickly and it just blows away. The thorny uh, results of, you know, bringing life and fruitfulness Amen. Are choked out by the cares of this world or by persecution or different things. So with those three, amen, we see that the first two, there's no fruit at all. I mean, it came up and it withered right away. I mean, it's dead or it never even came to life. The third one was not going to be fruitful because it was being choked out. There was no life in it. There was no real longevity, no quality. Maybe there was a bit of time there, a quantity of time. But the good soil is the soil that produces fruit, lasting fruit in your life, some 30, some, sometimes 60, and sometimes 100%, 100 times what we've put into it. Continue in them, Paul is writing, for in doing them, they will save you and they will save other people who you're in contact with. Save yourself first, he says. First and foremost, you will enjoy the reality of your own personal relationship with Jesus. This is not about uh, joining a club or an organization. This is about you being introduced to God, the Savior, Jesus. You can have a relationship with him. This is not a religious work, man, but it's a relationship, knowing God, bearing fruit in God. Amen. This is how you are going to save yourself. It seems a little self-centered, but amen, this is what is important first and foremost. Wholeness comes through believing and believing specifically in God and what he says. Being saved is our, save, our favorite word, sozo, the Greek word for wholeness. Amen. That when you believe, you will be made whole in your life. Amen. God has a compassion for the brokenhearted he wants to heal your life and save you to save from a suffering amen one suffering from a disease to be made well to be healed to be restored to health amen to preserve one who is in danger of destruction this is what we need to be saved from to be saved or to be rescued to deliver from the penalties of the messianic judgment to save from the evils which obstruct the recipient of the messianic deliverance. And lastly, as a result of you saving yourself, you're going to be infecting others. You're going to be influencing them. You're going to be saving other people through your life. Save those who hear you. Other people in your life will be greatly affected by your success. Amen. In the book, Make Your Bed, much depended upon the success of the platoon. They had to carry this rubber raft around together. And what's beautiful about the whole story is that the, I think there was, let's say there was probably eight or ten men in the platoon. And when one got sick with the flu or a cold, other people had to, uh, to, to carry the slack. And they took turns at doing this. Amen. It was not about them specifically. It was about all of them together. Then, when you had a swim partner, you, both of you, it was essential that your partner would be successful also. Your positive investment in your life brings a blessing to other people. And for a pastor, when he takes heed to himself, everyone else will be blessed. 
Amen. It'll spill out into his congregation. Amen. Let's go ahead and um, end this sermon right here. Let's close our eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants to save you first and foremost. That means he wants to work a wholeness in you and a healing and a miracle. Amen. It's called being born again. Amen. Not of the corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible, Peter writes, and by the word of God. The word of God says that Jesus became flesh, amen, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Amen. God, as God's own son, was born so that he could prove what he said. He had miracles. He raised the dead. He healed the sick, those who had leprosy and diseases. Jesus went about doing good and uh, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil tonight. That's you. Your life is oppressed and you're not saved. Whether you're here in the congregation or you're listening online, you're in a desperate place, my friend. You don't have any joy in your life, amen. The Bible teaches that he was a servant of sin, becomes a slave of sin. And I'm here to tell you tonight that you can be broke, free of your slavery, amen. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus Died for your sins. He wants to break up the power that sin has in your life. And you can be saved. How many of you be tonight? You're ready to make a change in your life. You're ready to get saved. Amen. I'm going to ask you to do one thing. You, uh, you're you going to uh, say, Preacher, please pray for me. I need uh, to be changed. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm broken and busted. And I can't be trusted. And God has a plan, and the way is through Jesus' blood. You want to get saved, and uh, you're willing to get saved tonight you, with an uplifted hand. Uh, no one's moving around, amen. Front to back, left to right, amen. Old and the young, male and female, amen. God loves you, died for you. If you raised your hand online, and then maybe you're not saved, or maybe you're a backslider. And like we spoke about uh, uh Paul was right to Timothy, continue in them. It's very difficult to continue in them when you give up your faith and you go back to your old sin, my friend, and you become a prodigal, like you're just wasting uh, your life away. And God wants you to come back to him. He wants that relationship to be restored. And you can uh, get your relationship right with God. Backslider, come home. Come back to Jesus. I want to pray with both of you. You lifted your hand. Amen. Close your eyes and say this prayer with me. This is the sinner's prayer. God, I know I'm a sinner. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I ask you to wash me in your blood and uh, make me clean. Though my sins are as scarlet, make them as white as snow. Change my mind. I repent of my wicked thinking. Come inside of my life and take control over me. And I will serve you all my days and I will think about you all the time. In Jesus' name, amen. You prayed that prayer. I'm going to ask you to contact us. Let us know how we can better serve you, how we can become a part of your life. Amen. And uh, or come to church, amen. We're located in the Toys R Us Plaza in Greece, New York, amen. God loves you and wants to develop inside of you a pattern of good works and bless your life. Let's change the order of the service. We're going to open up the altars for uh, the Christian that God is dealing with, or maybe you just want to come and reaffirm your love for Him. You want to talk to Jesus, amen. Come to the altar. And then think about uh, uh, these uh, issues uh, to push yourself. And in pushing yourself, you will be pulling others uh, along to their own fruitfulness with you. Amen. Let's sing a song and open up the altars. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah.
says the Lord your God tonight, you are in a war. My friend, you are uh, uh, up against a great enemy and you need an equipping. You need uh, to be trained uh, and you need my spirit. Thus says the Lord your God, uh, you are in a war tonight and I will enable and I will equip you for the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through me. And I will equip you, I will enable you, and you shall fight, and you shall be victorious, mm -hmm. and you shall save many, mm -hmm. and you shall deliver uh, multitudes from bondage and slavery and oppression. For I am a good God, and I want to see this happen. I will equip you, and I will make you ready, and uh, give you <laughs> wisdom on how to fight, how to battle, and how to strategize. For I am a God of war, and I yes. want you to win. I want you to...
to be successful as soldiers for Christ. Thus says the Lord your God tonight. Amen, Lord God. We thank you, God. Equip us, God. God, we're up for the challenge, Lord God. We want to see many saved and made whole, oh God. We want to free them, Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Is there another interpretation for that? Praise God. Hallelujah. That's got to be the Holy Spirit. Amen. God wants to equip you. Amen. If you're just playing hobby, man, if you're just playing game, life is not a joke or a toy. Amen. We're yes. at war, my friend, and we're going to be victorious. <laughs> we're going to, amen, uh, cause them to, we're going to take the battle to the gate. Amen. We're going to gain dominion here, and then we're going to see wonderful things happen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here with us, participating in our service tonight. Lord bless you. Have a great week. We'll be back on Wednesday night. Brother David, can you send us home? Yeah, thank you, Lord. We trust you'll go with us and guide us throughout the week. Give us the Sorry. grace to turn to you throughout the week, Lord, so we can be fruitful. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Have a great week.